Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are doing good. In this video, we will discuss the anatomy of muscles in the forearm. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. Muscles of the forearm can be divided into two groups: anterior group and posterior group. The anterior group is subdivided into two groups: muscles of the superficial layer and muscles of the deep layer. Muscles of the superficial layer include pronator teres, flexor carpi radialis, palmaris longus, and flexor carpi ulnaris. And the muscles of the deep layer include flexor digitorum superficialis, flexor pollicis longus, flexor digitorum profundus, and pronator quadratus. The muscles of the posterior group are also divided into two subgroups same as the anterior group. The muscles of the superficial layer in the posterior group include brachioradialis, extensor carpi radialis longus and brevis, extensor digitorum, extensor digiti minimi, and extensor carpi ulnaris. And the muscles of the deep layer include supinator abductor pollicis longus extensor pollicis brevis extensor pollicis longus and extensor indices as you can see there are a lot of muscles to cover so for this video we will cover the muscles of the superficial layer in the anterior group and see the origin insertion and action of these muscles but before that let's have a look at the anterior and posterior groups so this is the anterior and posterior view of the forearm where these muscles reside starting with the first muscle of the superficial layer in the anterior group the pronator teres this muscle originates from the medial epicondyle of the humerus and the coronoid process of the ulna and attaches laterally to the mid shaft of the radius the action of the muscle is pronation of the forearm let's have a look so this is the medial epicondyle of the humerus and this is the coronoid process of ulna both of these are the point of origin of this muscle this is the mid shaft of the radius the point of insertion so this muscle is the pronator teres a fact about the origin of all the muscles of the superficial layer in the anterior group is that they originate from the medial epicondyle of the humerus Some muscles have other point of origins too along with the medial epicondyle of the humerus like the pronator teres. Next muscle is the flexor carpi radialis. This muscle also originates from the medial epicondyle of the humerus and gets inserted to the base of second and third metacarpals. The action of the muscle is flexion and abduction at the wrist. Let's have a look. So this is the medial epicondyle of the humerus. And these are the points of insertion, the base of second and third metacarpal. So this muscle is flexor carpi radialis. Third muscle is palmaris longus. This muscle also originates from the medial epicondyle and attaches to the flexor retinaculum of the wrist. The flexor retinaculum is a fibrous connective tissue band that forms the anterior roof of the carpal tunnel. The action of the muscle is weak flexion at the wrist. Let's have a look. Again, this is the medial epicondyle of the humerus. And this is the retinaculum of the wrist, the point of insertion. This muscle is palmaris longus. A fact about palmaris longus is that it is absent in approximately 15% of the population. Last muscle is the flexor carpi ulnaris. This muscle originates from the medial epicondyle of the humerus and the olecranon process of the ulna. The muscle gets inserted to the pisiform bone, hook of hamate and the base of fifth metacarpal. As the name suggests, the action of the muscle is flexion and adduction at the wrist. Let's have a look. This is the medial epicondyle and this is the point of insertion, the pisiform bone, hook of hamate and the base of fifth metacarpal. So this muscle is the flexor carpi ulnaris. 
Before ending this video, let's take a look at all these muscles. So that is it for this video guys, we will cover rest of the muscles in the upcoming videos. Don't forget to subscribe the channel and follow us on Instagram. Links in the description.